Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome KIPP New Jersey's founder and CEO, Ryan Hill. Good evening, and thank you for joining us here tonight at our annual Be the Change celebration. As you've already seen, we have some amazing kids and teachers in our schools. Thank you for joining us and celebrating them today. Speaking of kids, guess who that is? At the age of 10 or 11, that was me and my brothers and sister, brother and sisters and cousins. And, and yes, that is the most flattering picture I could find of myself <laughs> from that era. My wife was helping me pick pictures and she's like, there's just, there's, not, there's nothing here. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid about middle school age, I remember my parents sending me to bed at like nine o'clock every night, but leaving the hallway light on because I claimed to be scared of the dark. I wasn't really scared, I swear. Does that look like the face of a kid who is scared of the dark? The dark was scared of me. Um, but there was another reason I wanted that light on, which was that as soon as my parents were gone, I would sneak out of bed and sit silently reading by the light of the hallway hours past my bedtime. As you just heard, we call that sneak reading. So people who've seen me drone on and on and on and on and on and on up on this stage over the years will be surprised to hear that as a child I was pretty reserved. You might even call me shy. In fact, and this will hopefully shock you, you might even have called me a dork, <laughs> past tense. Hard to tell from this picture, I know, but I was an insecure kid in middle school and I was always buried in books because I was never invited to the parties or whatever the cool kids were doing on the weekends and somehow I never had a date for the dance. Years later, I learned you actually have to ask somebody to the dance if you wanna to go to that but that was like 30 years later, so it was a little too late. Anyway, so in seventh grade though, a couple, like a year or two after this picture, I had this teacher, Mr. Wilhelm, who did everything he could to make reading fun and more importantly, to make it cool to be a reader. In Mr. Wilhelm's class, I got to see a higher version of myself than the shy kids standing on the sidelines of the dance floor. I could be proud to be a reader. I could be defined by the strengths I held, not by my shyness. This gave me confidence, which of course I needed years later when I was a 25-year-old principal. <laughs> now what are you laughing about? <laughs> Just kidding. Working alongside a group of other 25-year-olds trying to start this little school that would eventually grow to 11 schools across Newark and Camden. And yes, maybe still a little bit of a dork, but definitely way more confident. This is the impact of a great teacher. You can probably all think of a teacher you had as a child who did that for you. Maybe you can think of two of them, or even 10 if you're lucky. But you probably can't think of a 1,000, which is a number of teachers and other teammates I would need a whole bunch more slides to get through all of our teachers, so this is a sampling. Um, but you probably can't think of a thousand, which is the number of uh, teachers and teammates we have doing the same thing for our kids that Mr. Wilhelm did for me. Helping them find joy and achievement, helping them be proud of whichever strengths they hold, helping them be confident that they can live the life of their dreams. That, that group of 25-year-olds started KIPP New Jersey in 2002 with a middle school Team Academy, precisely because we saw a need to make the middle school years better for all kids, to help every single one of our students see themselves for the genius they hold. Whether it's the shy kid who reads a lot like me. Whoops. That, that's, sorry. This was supposed to be the thousand teacher slide as well. We can cheer for that. Whether it's the shy kid who reads a lot like me or the little girl who's obsessed with science or the young man who finds expression and success through music or the child with special needs who makes the most of the special talents that arise from those learning differences. We strive to make learning fun but also to make it rigorous and at times difficult because there's pride in the achievement of challenging goals. And our kids have achieved some really challenging goals. Over the years, over 1,000 KIPP New Jersey alumni have gone off to college, graduating at a rate nearly four times that of their peers. 
and then on to jobs in fields like accounting, management, social work, and entrepreneurship. We have alumni starting their own fashion lines. Others who are producing movies. An alum who tore the roof off this stage last year and then went on to do the same on a national stage. And one alum who became only the second black woman in history to work, to work as a trader on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. We even have one alum, a Dorian Murray Thomas, who is running to be the youngest woman ever elected to the board of the Newark Public Schools with Mayor Baraka's endorsement. Talk about confidence. And of particular excitement to those of us who taught them. We have over 20 alumni who now as 25 year olds themselves work alongside us each day as teachers, leaders, and other members of the KIPP New Jersey team and family. In fact, many of them are here with us tonight. Let's hear it for all of our alumni. And this is not just a success story for KIPP New Jersey. Throughout Newark, our kids have been part of the greatest expansion of educational opportunity that has happened in this country in recent memory. That may sound like hyperbole, but the data backs it up. On state tests, the number of kids outperforming the New Jersey state average have more than quadrupled over the past decade. Charter schools like ours have grown to serve more kids and have improved as we did it, and the district schools in Newark have gotten better and better results as well, from test scores to graduation rates. We are now at the point where Newark is ranked first in the country by far for having the most beat the odds schools of any city, any city in the country. As a community, we have worked together, families, teachers, and community leaders, and all of you are here, who are here tonight to achieve something really special and entirely unprecedented. And yet we have work to do before every one of our city's children has the educational opportunities they deserve. We still have families asking for more KIPP schools for their children, and this is why we have also committed to double in size over the next few years to meet that need by serving over 10,000 New Jersey students. So tonight is a night to reflect on this commitment and to recommit to our collective vision in which we see every child in Newark and Camden having access to a world-class education. And it's a night to thank you for all you do and to help and all you help us do for our kids. There are a few people I want to thank by name. First, our, who are here in the audience, first our, first our Newark Public Schools board members, Josephine Garcia, Reginald Bledsoe, Kim Gaddy, Fluisha Johnson, Asia Norton, and Tave Fadia. Now Tave is running on the same slate as a Dorian, and they are joined on that slate by a KIPP mom who is also here tonight, who we've honored on this stage before, Shavon Anderson. Thank you to Shavon. We also have members of the city council here, including representatives from each of the wards in which we have schools, Anibal Ramos Jr., La Monica McIver, John Sharp James, and Joe McCallum. Thank you to our council people. And then thank you to Senator Paul Sarlo and Assemblywoman Eliana Pintor Marin as well. And a special, special thank you to Senate President Pro Tempore, Teresa Ruiz. While he's not here, a big thank you to longtime supporter, Senator Cory Booker, who couldn't make it tonight. Apparently he's running for some other office now. I haven't been following it, but it, seems, it must be important, especially considering who's in that office now. Sorry, I'm not supposed to get political. Thank you to Senator Booker, who's been a big supporter over the years, and good luck to him. And then thank you to our board members, community partners, and other supporters who make it possible for us to do this work and for believing in us since those early days. Thank you to our teachers, who, are, who as you just heard, are so unbelievably dedicated to our kids and show it in their classrooms every day, who help them find their passion, whether in a book or on a stage, and become confident so they too can change the world for the better one day. And while we call them our kids, and we often think of them that way, they are not actually our kids. They are the children of the parents and family members who we work closely with in partnership to make sure their kids get everything they need to have the best chance to thrive. 
Our kids' success is first and foremost the result of their parents' hard work, and we thank you for all that you do. And then lastly, thank you uh, to, to the kids themselves. From the smallest kindergartner to the oldest alum, we now have over 6,000 current and former students whose talents, intelligence, and incredible drive to succeed is awe-inspiring. Thank you for your inspiration.